Hey everybody, today I'm going to give a quick demonstration of a couple of techniques for joining some pieces of your model. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. Um, I was working on a very large, heavy, kind of layered model with multiple pieces. And uh, originally I was going to try to use glue. I was using... Uh, I was just using standard Gorilla Glue. Some people choose to use Super Glue, which of course would have a little bit faster of a of a cure time. Uh, I didn't have any Super Glue handy, so I tried a tried another method that I think I heard about on Uncle Jesse, um, and I tried it and it worked great. I figured I'd give an uh, give a hands-on demonstration here of of what my experience was, and I, I think it will show. Uh, why I had good luck with this al alternative to glue. Um, so what you'll need, uh, of course I'm wearing gloves because we I'm going to be handling resin. I'm using Elegoo Standard Gray. That's the uh, same material that this was printed with. Uh, I'll use some Gorilla Glue for a demonstration. Um, you're going to need a UV flashlight if you want to do this or some way of curing, curing the resin. I have the Ultra Fire. Uh, this is the 502 UV. Uh, I bought the kit that came with the battery and it's it's pretty cool. It's a pretty sturdy flashlight. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, and then just some parts that I'm going to experiment with and uh, be putting on some groovy sunglasses because be, I don't want to get this UV in my eyes. So the first thing we'll do is we'll try the traditional glue method. And and glue, I think, will work great if you have uh, maybe flat surfaces, uh, m you know, where you're not going to be able to get UV light sort of in between the two parts. And I'll see if I if I have some uh, some parts I can demonstrate with. I'll show you. So if you've got some really nice flat surfaces like this, I think glue will be superior. Uh, and that's because, obviously, you'll want to put a little dab in there. And depending on what type of glue you're using, it may expand, it may have different drying times and things. So, um, But for, for this purpose... This should be okay. You've got two nice clean sort of flat surfaces here and probably a nice way to clamp or put some pressure on here so and weight it out. And that's a great scenario for using glue or super glue or one of those methods. You know, if you have a glue that expands like Gorilla Glue, you'll want to make sure you clean up, clean up any of this excess before it dries and um, starts to expand out of these joints okay so that's the glue scenario um, with this particular glue that i'm using it has a 24 hour cure time uh, at least uh, um, a good you know you'll have to wait a little bit of time before this really uh, takes these are light pieces so it's able to hold its own weight the other model i was uh, trying to join it was a big solid model that i printed and the pieces absolutely were not able to hold their own weight. I needed something stronger, faster. I was trying to get the model built. So here's an alternative. And, th and this works great, like I said, in these flat scenarios where you're not going to be able to potentially get UV in here. Uh, you need these, these pieces to uh, join. Now, if we're doing something a little different, like... I want to take this sort of weird rounded shape and join it to this other weird rounded shape. Now this is a scenario where glue would be suboptimal, right? Because it's going to be tricky to clamp. Uh, you're not going to be able to sort of easily hold this down and it's round. You could use maybe blue tape or elastic bands or something, but in any event, there, this is a scenario where um, I think you might benefit from using resin. 
and I'll, I'll I'll give you a quick demonstration. I wonder if I have anything. Yeah, here here's a bit better example. Here's a better piece. So if you wanted to join sort of this these kind of really odd shape pieces to one another, you know, you could get glue in here and probably clamp it, and it might be okay. But the resin gluing method for this, I think, is superior. Um, and I'll show you why. I, I had a good experience with it. So we can just, I'm just using some Elegoo standard here. Should put a little bit of resin. You don't want to put too much because it, it does run. Uh, I would tend to put it, put it potentially on both pieces. And the, uh, there are some advantages to this technique where you can even sort of fill in some some cracks and things and make it look more natural but it's it's really quite quick shine a flashlight on it i can already feel it getting stronger just as i'm sort of holding it here see this is why you should be careful with with not letting it drip on your model because you don't want that to happen so use a use it sparingly and make sure you wipe off the excess the the great thing about resin is You've got a lot of working time and a very quick cure time. So it will stay, you know, loose until you put UV light on it and then it will cure. So you can, if you make a mistake like this, provided you don't put UV light on it, you can easily wipe that up and, and uh, start over again. So here's where there's, that's pretty strong. I think if I put a lot of force on there, it, it probably will break off. But, but I mean, f given the amount of time we've just put into these two strange surfaces, we were able to join them pretty well. Hopefully you can see that. Get some light in there. Um, and then, the other scenario where I think resin is also superior is if you, if you do have a joint like this, uh, you can you can sort of work some resin in to a crack like this and sort of fill in these gaps, make it look a little more. This would be good for sort of organic organic parts. You can put a little dab in there and kind of let it let it smooth out just a little and put some light on it kind of make these seams look a little more natural I think not not so not so harsh there are times probably when you want a crisp edge um, there are times when you want the seam to sort of flow between the two pieces and I, I think it's a lot uh, better looking you're able to control kind of how this how these two pieces look from what the the transition from one piece to the next piece by using resin to kind of create that to create that um, transition the the uh, there is a downside to this technique which i'll show you in just a second let me just make sure i get uh get some light in there i'm trying to look away even though i have sunglasses on just you don't want to get a lot of uv in your eyes i don't think it's it's bad for you so uh now the downside here is that resin used like this is going to have a natural shine to it that is dry but it's it's got this sort of wet shine look so you can get around that by taking a bit of a scuff pad here and just kind of tape pulling some of the shine off and you can get different um, different uh, textures of this this they sell it in Green, I think, is the most coarse. Red is uh, more fine, and gray is uh, the the most fine. So this is this is going to give me a high amount of uh, scuff. But uh, these are the most common. You can really even find them in the supermarket to scrub pans and things. But I mean that that didn't take long and took that shine off. I think pretty well to the point where that that transition is is uh looking pretty smooth a little less a little less harsh a little more natural and of course you can you can continue to build that up 
uh, with some layers until you're until you're happy with the with the look of it. The good thing is, if you need to cure something quickly, you can always just get the flashlight on it, get it cured. You can build up that seam, make it look however you want. So, so I'm not saying don't ever use glue. I'm saying there are there are cases uh, for using glue of some type. Uh, there are also some some cases where just using a little bit of leftover resin will uh, m might give you the the re the result you're really looking for. So, hope that helps somebody. Like I said, that's that's dry. It's just very shiny, and you can come back in here and give a little scuff. Kind of work the transition. I think you get the I think you get the picture. You'd probably want to. Uh, you know, make sure it's well cured. I'm I'm kind of moving fast for the purposes of demonstration, but it, it's at this. Um, we're working with such thin amounts of resin here; it's um, dries pretty quickly. So I might try to make this transition look a little more natural here. If I can just try to feather this out. And you can keep working it until you're until you're satisfied with the look, and then you know build it up to as much as you want. You can, uh, if you need to, you can use uh, some sandpaper or a Dremel or something and smooth it back down. You don't want to go too crazy. It'll depend on the part, of course. Uh, for this would also be great for a very fine amount of I'm just going to put a little more over here I don't know why I'm going nuts with this um, this would also be good for a little um, very delicate join I think uh, and I'm going to try that experiment in just a second this foot ended up looking like I don't know some horns or something I kind of dig it but uh, I'm just using a couple of uh, failed prints here to to demonstrate the technique For minis and things, I think this would really be helpful. Um, you know, you, and then you can obviously make this look really, really uniform if you keep building it up. But uh, and for a really uh, delicate type of connection, I think this would also be this would also be excellent. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get these kinds of pieces to line up here, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So this would be this would be a pretty delicate type of connection here and something really fine like this we'll try it well here I go I'm not even sure I can hold that oh maybe so for a repair I think that would be your best bet you're going to be able to really clean up something like this I think a little better and since it's you're using the same material that it's made out of uh, I think both for for a big heavy piece that you you need some strength uh, and especially if the joint is not nice and flat and straight like this this is a great case for glue you'll have a difficult time getting UV light in between these pieces to cure uh, for a real delicate piece like this, where I just kind of join these two ends of this support here, that's that's pretty strong. So um, I think it's a good it's a good scenario. There are definitely some scenarios where this makes a lot of sense to to use. Uh, for two, if you did want to join two flat pieces like this, I would recommend not putting the resin between them necessarily because you're not going to get light in there and I don't know if it's going to cure well. Uh, if you were going to do something like this, you may put the pieces together and kind of seal around the edge 
like this. Try to clean that up a little bit. I mean, I'm not getting too fancy here because this is just a demonstration. But you can put the pieces around. This probably won't be as strong. Like I said, two flat pieces. It's I bet uh, your best bet is probably glue. But uh, if you don't happen to have any glue, or you you want to uh, get this kind of look uh, where you can smooth the transition between these two parts, uh, I would go around the edge. It doesn't really take long, probably 10 seconds or so, to get them to stick to one another. And if you're doing this for real, I'd give it a little more time than I'm doing in this video here, of course. You want your resin well cured. But here are a few different, a few different types of um, join where you could use resin in such a way. You could use it to connect two flat pieces, but again, I did it, I did it around the edge. I didn't do it inside and between the two pieces. Uh, it makes, makes a pretty nice looking connection between the two parts and it's, it's certainly strong uh, you know here where you want to build up and really smooth out between these two parts I think is a great scenario really delicate work where you've got tiny pieces and you want to really hide that seam I think that's a scenario where it could work too and again you know these all of that while this is the glue at least this particular glue has still not come close to drying. So uh, I hope this helps people uh, understand maybe when these um, opportunities present themselves, you can use resin instead of glue. I think it, it worked well for me. I'll be, I'll be mixing matching depending on use case. That's all. Thanks.